tak beli I don't know how to introduce myself but I can't be done I'm just you, you just have to google me like that's basically it. Henry Wu, Kamal Williams. There's too many different. It's so hard to introduce myself, basically. Today with Kamal, because we've got the boards out and it's a bit board centric today. Kamal Williams is the new project. It's, there's three other people heavily involved in this project McNasty on drums, Pete Martin, and Richard Samuels. Um, and yeah, we're a team. So that's, that's, that's what brought us to the return. <laughs> You know what, this, this is a Nord Electro, the thing that brought me the strings. A lot of people say, woo, how do you get this? How do you get them strings sounding so rich? And the truth is just number four on the Nord Electro, that's all it is, you know. Um, and then I made a hit off that. Obviously that's what brought strings a lot. And on the new record, I kind of um, did a, a track called, it's called The Return, it's the name of the album. And it's kind of just, just the strings really. I wanted to let the, the richness of these strings just have like a minute and a bit of it just the strings so I just kind of just moved around a little bit with some chords and and it just kind of has that kind of movie soundtrack kind of vibe to it some chords which on a regular piano or regular roads it might just sound like some chords moving around but re these strings really have some emotion to them. And then the micro preset here is, is something that I use um, for the lead sounds. This is really like a, a, a bit of a beast. When I kind of found this it's just got it, to me I call it, I call it whipped cream. Just, it just sounds so smooth, you know what I mean? So did another version of Strings of Light um, and I did it. I did it live a few times. We didn't record it, but I do like a sort of slowed down version. So I did it with the string. So it's like. But as you can see, like it's got it's got a nice little filter there. Um, and it's just you, you can't really get another plug-in or or um, um, any any of the new kind of virtual analog synths. They don't sound like this. And I like using the phaser as well. I've got a phase pedal um, um, that I use well, the Moog phase pedal. Um, for, for, for convenience, I'm just using this one. I might just hold down a call like that. That's a very Joey Zavinal kind of thing to do, put the, put, putting the phaser on the roads. The Juno 106, I mean, it's a, it's a monster. It's a monstrosity of a keyboard, really. Um, you know, you, you plug this in um, on a live setting and you're shutting down, you're shutting down venues, to be totally honest. Um, if you just listen to this patch here. And here, but it's just so fat. Um, I, I think many VSTs have been trying to emulate this this um, analog sound. I just don't think um, there's anything that sounds like it. And I think even the 60 and the 6, they're the, they're the sort of predecessors of this. They don't sound as, as full as this. They're more, um, they don't sound as punchy as this. I've got a lot of people that, that support, they've got the 60 and they use the 60 and it, it doesn't cut through as much. And I use this sound on um, Catch the Loop, this, 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 this sort of pad sound, but I kind of stab at it, so it's like.
mijn bass staan zit. En dan de same lead sounds are just all the pads really. It always starts from a basic little idea, you know. Like I'll just, I'll just have a rhythm or a certain. Uh, it might be, it might be one patch that I really just hear. Like for that, I've not really used that one there, for example. And immediately, I've just gone. Nah. That's a tune right there, you know. Um, I'll make that into a little house banger. Um, and that's 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 woo funk right there. That's just that that minor sort of dark sounding progressions that I like to use, and you know. Um, so yeah, a lot of a lot of the things will be little chord, a chord or a, a, a progression or a sound, um, and then I'll just say, for example, that little progression there. I'll I'll record that in, or I'll put a, a kick drum over it, and then we start, and then it's we start cooking, you know, from there. <laughs> Yeah, I've had the, the Juno and the Micro preset and my Fender Rose, those are my little go-to things. But there's nothing that beats the, um, those analogue sounds because obviously when you buy these things, they're second-hand, they've got uh, a soul in them already, you know, they've got life in them, so things have happened, they've been on the road, so I believe that that all counts towards the sound of it. And this wor Whirly here sounds a little bit battered up, you know, it's been through a few breakups, you know what I mean, over the years, so it's, it's got a few stories to tell. It would be nice to just touch the grand piano for a little bit because it's not often we get the opportunity to do that, you know. I think as a producer, um, I've always made made like do with what I've had around me, you know. So it's always been what I've had access to. So I've never really had access to a grand um, on such a, a regular basis. So I thought, yeah, let's just sit down on this for a second. Um, and uh, the tune situations on the album it was originally written on a grand. So I'll just um, I'll just show you a bit of that really. You know, you can play as much as you want on a certain keyboard, but it might not. It, it might just be one chord, just and it just it just cuts through on the grand. It's just, I mean, look at it. I mean, it, it, you you can't really play anything bad on this. You know, it's just all the the, the strings, the the hammers hitting the strings, like it, it, everything about it just it just cuts through. Mm -hmm. 